Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting and very information-packed episode of CSGO News. So I'm going to try and break down all the roster changes and stand-in players going on this week and the next couple weeks as well in CSGO. So I hope you guys all enjoy. Let's start off with our first all, our, our favorite player out there known as Mixwell, who is, according to Rush B Podcast, going to be standing in for Cloud9. Now, I'm sure you guys are well aware of Cloud9 looking for a player to replace FNS currently and still on their bench out there. And it seems that Mixwell will fit that role for two upcoming events, the first of which will be ESL Cologne next week. And after that, actually, will be E-League cut in the following week after that. Now some cool information as well. We do speculate rumors out there as who might join Cloud9, who might leave Cloud9. You guys have heard several rumors out there about Skadoodle, who's actually publicly stated he might even be retiring from CSGO. This is now the second or third time he's brought that up, which brings in a whole mix of options. If Mixwell is one of the options for the future, it could also bring in some other options if Skadoodle leaves on top of that. So currently for E-League as well as ESL Cologne, it will be Mixwell for Cloud9, and I cannot wait to see this team back in action because if you guys do remember the last time Mixwell played with some of these guys, Russian Tark was back on Optic Gaming, and they ended up winning uh, actually E-League Season 2 against some very top tier teams. That final was actually against the Strauss in a best of three. So Mixwell looking to return to Cloud9 and that Russian Tark trio back to E-League as well as ESL Cologne. But on top of that, think about this a little bit. It does open up options if Cloud9 is willing to wait long enough. If Skadoodle actually ends up leaving Cloud9, but he's willing to wait a couple more months, those G2 buyouts of Apex and MBK could become open. And just think about this. We have the former teammates, Mixwell and MBK, possibly joining Cloud9 in place of FNS and Skadoodle, but you also have the chemistry of Mixwell, Rush, and Tark on that team. It could be a very viable option for the future of this Cloud9 roster. So very exciting stuff coming from Cloud9, guys, as a new roster does approach. Will Skadoodle leave, though? That's the real big issue here. Will Mixwell join permanently? Another big question mark for Cloud9, but still very exciting stuff coming soon. And speaking of former Cloud9 members, it does seem nothing will return to the Mouse Sports roster. He first played for them at ESL Belo Horizonte. He was actually in place of Oscar there, though, because Oscar had some personal issues, and that's why he missed that tournament and now seems a very unfortunate for Sticko on that roster. It seems nothing will be staying in for him and Sticko's been officially benched on that Mouse Sports roster. But also another big news, who might permanently replace Sticko on that roster? It does seem to be the one, the only, Virtus Pro Snacks who could be leaving that roster. Now we've had several hints of this the past few weeks. It was actually first Pasha who tweeted out things like this all across his Twitter. He's had some he's had some very daunting Twitter posts all across the last few months. That was definitely one of them. And then we actually had Snacks leave the Virtus Pro ESCA roster. And on top of that, the general manager now for Virtus Pro has confirmed that Snacks is actually considering other options and Mouse Sports is indeed one of them. So it could be very cool to see. I mean, this is kind of a legendary roster change in itself. Snacks leaving Virtus Pro, it does seem by the looks of it that Virtus Pro as well would not actually make Mouse Sports buy him out because of course they still have about three years, two to three years at least on those lengthy contracts left. So Snacks could be going to Mouse Sports for the time being though, it will be nothing on that roster. Now very lastly, I do believe I might have missed some changes out there. It does seem as well we have Horvy playing with the current Tempo Storm roster. That will be for the DreamHack Masters qualifier, though. And he also hints at, at who he's going to be playing with as well. On top of that, the roster will be apparently Happy, Headshot, Innocent, and Fox. So it will be a very weird mix just for a qualifier, though. But it's very strange to see a set roster like Tempo Storm joining with Horvy all of a sudden for a qualifier. So it's going to be cool to see if they do manage to qualify. But that was in little roster change news. But still, big things coming. And okay, I did miss one thing, guys. There was a slight heroic change. I feel very bad for Rubino. If you guys remember around a month to a month and a half ago, he actually took some time off due to an iron infection. He was replaced by Croman on that roster. Croman is now taking place on FaZe Clan doing very, very well over there, but it does not seem for the time being that Croman has actually solidified his place in FaZe Clan. I think they're actually eyeing other options. We'll see what happens in that in the future, but unfortunately enough, it does seem as of last night, Rubino's eye infection has relapsed, meaning it has come back to affect him, and apparently he has now been benched for the time being for quite some time. No one knows the details on it, exactly what his eye infection really is. It does seem, obviously, to be haunting him for quite some time now, and he has been replaced by a former Imperial member. That is a on that roster for the time being and he will be there for quite some time what they actually make it sound like is actually going to be replaced for the time being for the European closed qualifier that's not for a couple weeks so it seems that Rubino is going to be taking some extensive time off due to this eye infection and for the time being a Cillian will stand in for all tournaments including including the European closed qualifier for the face it major so some big tournaments for a Cillian to fill in for and we'll see if Heroic's chances obviously being hurt by this and they were one of the favorite teams going into it at least for just to surprise some teams out there to take one of those two spots and this definitely hurts their chances to make the major qualifier. And speaking of closed qualifiers, if you guys are following the Face It Major roadmap, we did finalize the North American closed qualifier for the teams who are going to go to the minor just a couple days ago. It was actually these six American teams on screen, joined by Furia and now Temcomo out of South America. Those will be your eight teams so far in the North American minor, two of which will go to the major qualifier itself. So those teams, all in all, probably more of your favorite teams to go through, but there was some controversy as to the last team to go through with a 3-2 and two record, and that was Swole Patrol. Now, why it was actually a controversy 
a great article by VP Esports. I'll link it down below about the face it qualifying system for this major. They did choose the Swiss format. Now the Swiss format, if you guys are well aware of this, it's pretty much every team plays a similar team with the same record and it means the first teams to three wins goes through and the first teams to three losses do not go through. So it's pretty simple, straightforward, but with the number of teams in the North American qualifier, it did not really work out too well because alongside Swole Patrol, we had two other teams, Team 1 and Luminosity Gaming, also with a 3-2 and two record and unfortunately enough, it was actually Swole Patrol who went through on round differential. Now you guys can imagine this is actually a very controversial thing because they won the same number of games and they lost the same number of games and they both play, all three played, you know, some top tier talent there and they probably deserve to go through and there was no playoff between those three teams. It was just off round differential that Swole Patrol did go through. Now in the past, we've seen this system where it's actually nails those last three teams with the same record and they have a playoff between those three teams. So pretty much how it would work out is Swole Patrol was the number one team based off round differential. They got a bye to the final round versus number the winner of the number two and three teams and the winner of the, eventually uh, the, those one and two seeds would actually go through and take that final spot. So there was a little bit of a controversy. So some learning lessons here in the future. Now, again, I really can't argue too much about this. And in terms of round differential, Swole Patrol had a sizable lead. So they did earn their way through based off the previous rules. You cannot blame them as a team. But in the future, things to learn from for teams like Luminosity Gaming, who might have been expected to go through uh, in general. So kind of feel bad for them as well. A solid looking roster throughout this qualifier. So unfortunate news there. And kind of a community segment right here. I want you guys to respond down below. Say yes, say no, whatever you guys think about this. But I saw Strauss's coach Zonic had a great tweet about this and the potential for at least CSGO majors, if not other CSGO events, to actually bring back communications and ability for, for listeners or viewers out there to actually hear team speak and team communication or team calls uh, in their actual chats. That'd be an amazing feature. When I first saw this, I thought, yes, that'd be amazing. Not only for content out there, a bunch of YouTubers would love to record this kind of thing. On top of that, we'd love to hear some great conversations back and forth between players. I think that'd be one thing to really get me back into actually viewing CSGO as an esport itself would be to see how these players actually talk back to one, one another, how they talk to each other. And it might actually, you know, maybe, uh, maybe it would actually increase toxicity. Maybe it would actually remove it from the scene. But it'd be great to see what players out there talk real trash to other teams. And it could start some controversy. But again, this, this game needs controversy right now. It needs some arguments out there. It would be great to see not only how players talk to each other, but how they talk about other teams out there. So that'd be a really cool idea. So what do you guys think about that? At least at the majors, having an option to toggle on and off team speak would be a great idea. And also in big news for all you Anomaly fans out there, it does seem as of yesterday, and the point of me recording this, he has been banned on Twitch, although he did also report on Twitter. He did actually make sure to tweet out, it will not be a permanent ban, most likely. Most likely going to be a 30-day ban from Twitch, apparently for hateful conduct. Now, I'm not sure what, what hateful things could possibly come out of his mouth. I, I highly doubt it was actually anything substantial, but yes, he has been apparently uh, temporarily banned on Twitch, and it could be a 30-day ban, most likely not going to be permanent. So do not worry, guys. You can still watch his streams all you want. Now, on top of that, going to round out today's episode of CSK News with a bit of a rant and also kind of a comment on yesterday's video, which I, I do kind of want to apologize for. But first off, I also want to bring up the point of MBK and Apex's $800,000 reported buyout. This is actually reported by Nell out there. Yes, that is twice the amount of Stewie 2K's buyout. That is a ridiculous sum of money by Ocelot, the G2 owner. And it really kind of, it makes me question. Again, I'm kind of confused. I think as we make these CSGO news videos, I learn, you guys po possibly learn as well. But I've always been kind of surprised by this kind of thing where G2 obviously has plenty of money in their pockets, but still they could have the more the merrier. Obviously this G2 roster is not going to continue to play and earn them money. Why do these guys con continue to sit on buyouts and not at least get something for their players? Obviously MBK and Apex, MBK especially has interest from other teams out there. Why not one, lower the buyout or, or two, at least release these guys for a sizable sum and at least make something back for these players that they will not make you back as they sit on the bench and don't play at all. I've always been confused by that tactic, but it seems that G2 is going to hold out on these guys for at least the time being and reportedly by Nell, each of these guys, including Apex, had an $800,000 buyout clause in their contract, which is absolutely ridicu ridiculous. Bouncing off that, guys, in happy news, we had Crims uh, getting engaged and eventually going to be married as well to the, the love of his life, so that was some cool stuff. And very lastly, for all of you guys, I do want to talk about one last roster change. It does seem the higher tier French players are apparently now stand-in players for the LDLC roster. It does seem for the French Championships, it will be RPK standing in for Alex and LDLC's roster. So some big news there. Who knows if RPK is there to stay? I highly doubt that. If it would be, it'd be kind of a uh, tumultuous, uh, that's not a word, tumultuous. It'd be a definite odd mood for us to see. Obviously, we kind of renown these guys like RPK, MBK, Happy, Screen, those guys in the upper French slash Belgian scene to play for the only top tier teams like Envious and G2. When is the last time we 
we've seen a player like that, besides maybe in existence, play for the LDLC squad. So we'll see how RPK does in the upcoming weekends with the LDLC roster. Oh man, the VGO video. Uh, just really, I'm gonna keep this brief, guys. I don't want to say I'm sorry, but I, I do. I did not realize that I was gonna piss off that many people with my last video. So I do quickly want to say thank you uh, for all of you guys who like my content, enjoyed the video, as well as heard some of my main points. I know when I made that video, there was gonna be a lot of points that did not help me out. Obviously, I've taken gambling sponsors in the past. Um, that makes me a hypocrite automatically right off the gate. Um, I also made sure to note in the video that I might have a gambling sponsor in the future. That denotes my credibility right away. But I'm going to stand by my words, guys. I, and again, I also said if you guys watched the video throughout the entirety, which I imagine most of those gamblers and their fans did not, I clarified three times in the video very clearly that VGO right now to me, it does seem like a very trustworthy site. It's probably not going to scam anyone. It's not going to take your money and leave. But I did also want to stress the, the sketchiness of the entire thing and the fact that OP Skins probably blatantly owns it, but the fact that neither company can actually admit it kind of it kind of worries me a little bit. Now, of course, the overall the overall goal of this company and most companies out there is to make a profit. But when it comes to this, is just no longer tied to the CS:GO scene and the fact that we have our our once favorite CS:GO gamblers or YouTubers in general now promoting it. It just se it seems weird to me, and I, I really can't get my point into words. But thank you for all of you guys who understood, for all of you guys who disliked the video but left a comment. I appreciate that very much. I love those kind of videos where it's an open debate. It's it's really I share my opinion you guys share yours and so thank you guys even if you dislike the video I, that's I really don't care about that at all what I care about is the people who dislike or hate on me and don't leave an evaluative comment down below so thank you guys for the feedback I do appreciate that I will continue to read those comments all through tonight and, to, and this weekend as well to kind of get you guys' grasp on what VGO is and what you guys think about the future of it but for me myself personally especially after making that episode um, <laughs> I think it's safe to say all VGO and gambling sponsors are pulled are, are pulled away from me for the time being so thank you all for watching as always my name is Jake Mike, you big announcements coming soon, and I will see you all hopefully tomorrow or sometime soon. Goodbye, guys.